What's going on guys? So I decided today I was gonna shoot a video as I was going for a walk. It's probably gonna be a bit shaky, so I do apologize. I don't think my front facing camera has a very good stabilizer, unfortunately. It is the brand new iPhone, but they like to uh, skimp out on a good camera when it comes to the front side. So it is what it is. I could try to fix it in post, but I'll have to crop in. and It's not gonna look good. So hopefully it's not too nauseating. But we need to talk about MetaZoo because there's some serious problems that need to be addressed. I know people like to say I show for MetaZoo. I talk shit about Flesh and Blood and all these other games, but I hold up MetaZoo to such high regards. It's just not true. I mean, I saw so much potential in MetaZoo. That's why I backed it so early on. You know, I loved the game. Mike was making some really good decisions. I thought I could trust him. Same thing with James White. They both came on very strong in the beginning and then fell apart. It's odd, it's very strange. I don't know if the success gets to their head or what the problem is, but it's not good. You know what I mean, it's not good. But today is gonna be the day where I talk about why I think MetaZoo is kind of uh, in a bad place right now. I'm not saying that they're gonna die or anything like that. I think they have a lot of things in the pipeline coming up in the works the next like year or so with a potential show and video game and the book and everything. That's very important, the IP is gonna be huge. And you can say what you want. Well, the IP should have came out beforehand, like Pokemon, but I mean, they needed the money to support it, even though I think Mike had a lot of money to begin with, but that's what the NFTs and stuff do. It's kind of a double-edged sword. You know, they were able to make a lot of money with that, and if they could dump it back into the company to make a really good game and show, then that's great. Because honestly, I don't want them to just rush this shit out when it's gonna be terrible. You know what I mean? You don't want that. We want it to be very high quality. It'd be very important that it, it really hits a home run right off the gate, because if not, no one's gonna care. They're gonna shit on it and it's gonna be the end of it. It's gonna be over, you know? Got one shot, you know what I mean? Can't miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime, as Marshall Mathers once said. So, you know, we can't afford to do that. So I understand why they went the route that they did. But lately he's been making a lot of stupid decisions. You know that I like to talk about print runs because these companies think that they need to rush to print 100K. I don't understand why. The only thing I can think of is it's just cheaper to print 100K, but it's like they come out the gate and they think the only way they can be seen as an official TCG is if they print 100K boxes. And I don't know why they're trying to rush to that point because it doesn't make sense. And I talked about it before in the past, this doubling of print runs every single set, it's stupid. You know what I mean? There's no reason why Nightfall should have been 50,000 boxes. There's no reason for it. It should have been no more than like 30, 35K. And even Wilderness should have been no more than 50K. Even that, I think, is a lot. But to make it 100K is ridiculous. I saw today, people are selling Wilderness booster boxes for $50. That's danger zone low. $60 is the line. $50 is danger zone low. I never thought I'd see the day. It's sad. It's very sad. And it's because they're overprinting these boxes. 100K is just too much. There's not a big enough fan base to eat up the boxes. Just like I said with Flesh and Blood, the same thing here. I'm glad that they actually give us the numbers beforehand, unlike Flesh and Blood, at least they're being transparent. And I'm glad that they dropped out second edition with Nightfall and moving forward, but I don't understand why they did that in the first place. If they had this mindset that they're gonna do second edition and potentially third edition and stuff later on, they should have stuck with that model. There's no reason to be putting out so many boxes of first edition. People like to say, well, in five to 10 years, if this game's successful, it's not gonna matter because there's gonna be so many people in the game that those numbers are not gonna be high. And I agree with you. Problem is, we gotta get to that point first. And it's not gonna happen if the game dies. You gotta understand, dude, this is a very, very fragile subject. You know what I mean? Print runs is a big deal. And 100K is just too much. You know, even with all the specialty stuff in the boxes, even with the golden tickets and the bronze and silver tickets and the green men and everything else, it's not enough. It's not enough to entice people. And I agree. They should have more chasers in there that you can get like one every like 25 boxes or something. You know what I mean? Just to give people a little extra. I know there's a lot of stuff in there already, but you gotta entice people because most of these cards in these boxes now, it's pretty damn worthless. And it's sad to see because the game started out so strong, but it was because it was getting hyped through the roof. And now it's dying down. Most of your singles are worth like pennies, basically. Not really, they're like literal dollars. And it's just terrible, you know? There's no value in the boxes. There's too many boxes out there. People can't get rid of the stuff, you know? And then on top of that, he keeps banning people left and right. 
I don't understand it. Like he's hiding in the discords, lurking around. He's a little henchman, they're reporting back to him, posting screenshots and stuff. Anytime you say anything negative, he just can't take the criticism. And he's banning people. He's literally canceling their orders on the MetaZoo website because people are posting negative things in the Instagram. I don't get it. They're just criticizing the game, but you gotta take criticism. You know what I mean? You have to take it and you have to either decide if you wanna to listen to them or not, that's up to you. But you gotta be able to take it. And he's trying to act like the PR man and this and that and that and this. He's just, he's trying to wear too many hats and he needs to step down. I'm not saying he should step down like I think James White should. I think he should still run MetaZoo, but he needs to knock it off with the PR, knock it off trying to control people. All these L LGSs now that are quitting the game, fire selling the boxes, it's just not good. It's not good. And he acts like it's fine. It's all gonna work out. That's because he continues to sell product. Every time there's a new release, it's selling out immediately. And that's a whole nother issue because they set it up to do so. They have this mind frame, if things don't sell out immediately, it's gonna look bad for MetaZoo. That's why they didn't have limits on stuff for the longest time. You know, there was this, this pre-notion that if things sit on the website for hours or even days at a time, it's gonna look like the game is dying. I don't understand this premise. That's what people thought. Finally, they actually put some limitations on stuff, but it's absolutely ridiculous. Listening to the wrong people, I don't know what it is. You got Steve Aoki just pushing NFTs down everybody's throat. Like I said, that's a double-edged sword. It's helping them at the same time it's hurting them. It's keeping a lot of people away, but it is giving them the funds that they need. So I can understand why it's there, but they need to slow their roll. And these issues are just only getting worse and worse. You know what I mean? That's not even talking about the clumping issues and stuff like that, which I don't know if they're being addressed. I don't understand why in the UFO boxes, the booster boxes, you're mostly getting full hollows. I don't get that either. It never made sense to me. Just had the reverse hollows in the spell books previously. It just seems like a blunder to me. He likes to act like they were intentional when problems happen. Usually they're not. He just covers it up so it looks good. I'm not here to show MetaZoo. I'm telling you guys right now. Like, I'll shit all over this game because there's problems too. Just like I said though, I see enough here, so much potential, strong team behind it, that I think it still will succeed. Even with all these hindrances, I still think it will succeed. It's just hitting some bumpy roads right now. And it's not good with the economy being the way that it is. Everything's down. People like to blame just MetaZoo alone. It's not true. But at the same time, MetaZoo's taking bigger and bigger hits as time goes on. Things continue to drop in price. Yeah, CryptoNation 1 is still way above MSRP. Some cards here and there are still worth a lot. But a lot of the stuff is gone. I got my ass handed to me on tons of promo cards and stuff that I bought. I got thousands and thousands of dollars wrapped up in this game. So you can say I'm biased. I want to see the game succeed. But these problems need to be addressed before it's too late. You know what I mean? And like I said, it really relies on the IP being pushed. Television show is going to be huge. If that gets out there and takes off, then who knows where this game will be in another year or two. But until that happens, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. You know, we had the release event in Roswell. There was only like 100, 150 people that showed up. That's great. That's wonderful. But that's nothing. You know what I mean? And it's cool that they do these events because it makes it unique. People talk about it. But at the same time, you know, I heard people saying the same thing about this. They're like, you know, instead of them worrying about doing these exclusive events, they should put it somewhere where a lot of people can attend because the amount of people attending is more important than where they're being attended. And I kind of agree to them with that. You know, at the same time, we need to start seeing some bigger numbers with the players, you know, just fans in general. We're only getting like 100 people, you know, 300 people showing up to an event. That doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look great either. People want to see those numbers. I mean, Flesh and Blood was finally pouring in like 1,000, 1,500 people. You know what I mean? That was big. People still say that nobody plays the game. People play the game. You know what I mean? That's the only thing good about Flesh and Blood is the game. A lot of people like MetaZoo, but at the same time, see people go, well, they have these high you know, cash prizes and stuff because they're trying to entice people to play the game. If that wasn't there, they wouldn't want to play. I mean, I can agree to that to some extent, but nobody else is putting out these cash prizes. You know what I mean? So it is big. They're trying to change the TCG world for the better. And I think it's wonderful. But at the same time, this game is not growing at the speed that Mike thought it was going to grow. You know what I mean? He said we were going to grow initially, literally. I think the end of last year, he said he thought it was going to grow like 100 times this year. And then he walked back and he said 10 times. And I was like, 100 times, you're on crack cocaine. 10 times, you're still on some crack cocaine. There's some lower grade shit. You know what I mean? But whatever, here we are like halfway through the year. I pay attention to Instagram numbers. That's really what I use to kind of determine 
where the growth is. Generally, I know not everyone's on Instagram, but it's gone up what? Like 9,000, I think. Because we're at 20K at the end of the year. Now that I think they're at like, they're almost breaking 30K. So we've gone up like 9K or so. But that's not 100%. I mean, that's not uh, 10 times growth. You know what I mean? It's barely doubling our growth. That's not even doubling our growth. Because doubling would be 40K. So it's like, what are we doing, Mike? You know what I mean? Our growth is not reaching the potential that you said it was going to reach. And maybe you got things planned for the end of the year. I really hope you do. But like, so far, things aren't going that great. I mean, yes, it continues to grow faster than most of these other games. Numbers continue to go up consistently. But it's not fast enough. Especially when you're printing these 100,000 boxes. And he has this idea that he can't lower the print runs because it's going to make the game look bad. And then he says some people are going to complain. Some people will be happy, but other people are going to complain because they can't get their hands on it. I don't understand. I never had problems even getting Crypto Nation 1. I had two chances to get as many of those boxes as I wanted to because I was there early and I knew how to use Google. And if other people couldn't, it's because they were late and they were complaining, whining. I don't know. Nightfall, the same thing. I could have bought, got as many boxes as I wanted. It was hard very early on, but it became very easy. And there was 50,000 of those. And I know the game has grown a lot since then, but you can't tell me if you would have printed 50,000 of Wilderness that that would have been a problem. It wouldn't have been. It really wouldn't have been. You know what I mean? You can meet in the middle of 75K. I still think that's way too much. And like I said, if you want players to be able to get their hands on the cards, then put out a second edition. That's what second edition is there for. But these card creators, all these games, they don't... I don't know. It's like they think they just need to overprint first edition, and then the prices plummet, and that affects everything. Because everybody starts shitting on the game, saying it's dying. Prices are way down. You know what I mean? The hype dies. It's just, it's not good across the board. It affects everything. You may not think so. Some people say, who gives a shit? That's just collectors and investors. It should mainly about mainly be about the players. And that's just not true. Because you see the damage that it causes. Everything. The whole game is damaged. When you fuck around with print runs. And you do things that you shouldn't be doing. So I just want to put this video out there to show people I don't show for MetaZoo. This game has a lot of problems. And it's pissing me off right now because, like I said, I thought Mike was way smarter than this. And I really thought I had faith, you know, I could put faith in him and everything, that he was going to make the right decisions. And right now, it's just he's acting like a child, like literally like a man child. And I know I just shat on freaking flesh and blood for banning, you know, George and Louie and making it so they can't sell him. And Mike does this all the time. I get that. You know what I mean? So for me to love one game and not the other, but they both do the same thing, that's kind of me being a hypocrite. And I'm not a hypocrite. You know what I mean? It's a serious problem. I addressed it even in that video, not as hard as I could have, but it is a serious problem. I'm not happy about it. You shouldn't be banning people. Again, free country, shouldn't be no cancel culture. If you don't like what somebody's saying, who gives a shit? Your product speaks for itself. You know what I mean? But unlike flesh and blood, I really don't think Mike is doing it because he's afraid of the damage that it may cause. Because he does have belief in his product. Because it continues to sell, continues to sell out. You know what I mean? We're flesh and blood. I do feel like it's damage control. They are afraid that, you know what I mean? It's going to do damage because they don't have faith that their product's going to sell. You know what I mean? That's why he didn't release the print run numbers before. Because he was afraid that it was going to affect it. He's already proven that to me multiple times. So you can see why I don't like James White and I think he should step down. But I also don't like Mike Waddell, but I don't think he should step down necessarily. You know what I mean? If he continues to make stupid decisions, then yes, I will be right there. I'll be the first person with a pitchfork saying Mike Waddell needs to step the frick down. Stick to designing the game, writing the story. But the people, you know, in charge need to, I don't know, man. They need to freaking revolt and be like, you know what, Mike? You need to take a step back. I heard that he's not banning people as much as he was. I don't know how true that is. That's just rumblings behind the scene. I don't know. But it's not good. You know what I mean? Regardless, like why he even did in the first place. Like I understand this idea. You know what I mean? Because I'm a creator too. I make all kinds of stuff. Songs, artwork, videos, all kinds of stuff. So I understand that people judge your work and somebody criticizes you, says something you don't like. You know what I mean? It makes you feel bad. I mean, I understand how that affects you, but you got to grow tough skin and you just got to move on. Especially if you're running a company, you got to be seen as professional. And it's not professional when you're banning people and acting like a child. Lurking around freaking discords and YouTube comment sections and shit screenshotting people whenever they say something and when it comes to other people you know what i mean you constantly give different reasons why you ban them every other week it's something different it's crazy more transparency with metazoo which is great you know what i mean that's why i don't hold them to the cross as much as i do with flesh and blood because they don't have no transparency they don't want to talk to you at all but it doesn't make metazoo that much better 
They're maybe a little bit better in some of those you know, regards, but things need to change. I'm sure Mike will see this. Like, I love this game. I love everything you've done with this game for the most part. It's amazing. I love the world that you created. But man, it's just some serious blunders that need to be corrected before the shit hits the fan.